The school bus. Um, start off with uh, be careful with uh, what you wish for. That's not the thought. Just be careful what you wish for. Um, I asked for this and I got it. <laughs> and, um, man, I spent all day yesterday knowing that I had this today because uh, 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 Negro uh, security uh, reminded me last night because security said, so you got thought of the day tomorrow, and I said, oh, great. Then I got home at night, and then I told my wife, babe, I got thought of the day. And she says, okay, well, just go from your heart. Say what you got to say. And I was like, eh, it's not that easy. Um, and then I was up at night, and then she's like, what's wrong? And I said, man, I don't know what to say. There's a lot of things I could say, you know. Um, what's a thought that can stay? I'm like, man, there's too many. How can you put it in one? It doesn't happen. Um, and um, last week I spoke to about 400 kids at Palisades uh, Charter High School. Um, and usually they send two people, or usually you go with G and two homies, you know, and they split an hour in pieces, you know, you get 15 minutes apart. I had 45 minutes straight, and I'm like, damn, what am I going to say? You know, but I filled it up. It happened. Wow. <laughs> Until I could talk. Um, I learned from the best. And um, I was there, and I did the talk, and then on Friday, I flew out to Sacramento, and they had me on a committee for gang policies. And I'm there, and I'm suited up. I didn't wear a bow tie, because I was a little scared that they'll say, what's wrong with this cat? <laughs> And I'm there, and 95% of that meeting, and 95% of the people at that meeting were uh, law enforcement. And these are people with gang policies. And 5% were, well, 1% was an ex-gang member, and then 4% were attorneys or, or, or something else. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, man, what am I doing here? How did I get here? <laughs> Me. And... Uh, I sat there, and they started talking, and I said, holy smokes, I need a dictionary. <laughs> but then I sat there, and then I said, no, wait a minute, I belong here. I belong here. <clears throat> um, Father Rick Bull always says it, and I quote him all the time, but this time I'm going to read it, because uh, if I quote him wrong, he's right behind me. Give uh, <laughs> me my last picture. <laughs> but... <laughs> Sorry, taking a while because you're nervous, and I never get nervous. It says, uh, Here's what we see a compassion that can stand in awe at what the poor have to carry, rather than stand in judgment at how they carry it. And I translate that because, you know, he's speaking about, I think, the Jesus days when, you know, you see the poor. But I think he's translating to us, the homies and homegirls that walk in through these doors. And he always says, like, you guys have, you are carrying so much. When we all walk into his office, we tell him our story. And he hears us out with compassion. But what he does when he goes out and speaks to people is he tells them about you guys. <coughs> about me, about you, about Teresa, baby and me, everything. That's what he tells them. And he says, look at what they have to carry. And I stand with them. Not stand looking at them, I stand with them. I stood at that meeting and I said, nah, man, I belong here. Because he stood with me. And he let me believe that I am who I am. And I should be there. Expert in gangs, I should be the number one in it. 95% law enforcement. If you go back into what uh, Father Greg Boyle speaks in the past, in past meetings when he used to have dark hair, and he speaks about law enforcement, and he says law enforcement thinks they know about gangs because they've been in law enforcement. Because you're law enforcement doesn't mean that you know about gangs and gang members. Because when you know about gangs and gang members, you stand with them, and you get to know what they carry, and you hear it. You don't judge them and say, you committed a crime, go to jail. You find out what's going on and the reason why they're committing a crime. And that's what he does. So a lot of us admire this man, but I can honestly say he admires everybody in this room. And when he goes out and speaks, he speaks about you guys, and he speaks about me. So what I come today is I say, <coughs> admire yourself and those around you. Admire him, yeah, but you can't give him all the credit. You gotta give yourself some too. And this goes for volunteers, 
teachers, homies and homegirls, people coming on Fridays for the lottery, Wednesday orientation, people on Facebook, because I know it's going to be up there. It's all those people that believe in you guys. And I close with this last little story. I went to Encino to the movie premiere with Steve Avalos, man. And we went and we said, you know, they prepped us. said, hey, get ready, you know, and have a booth and a microphone and you're going to speak to them and la la. So we're ready, you know. And we show up and I say, do we have a mic? And they say, ah, the Indian Festival has it. And I said, well, we need a mic. And they kind of said, ah, sir, there's only two people. And I said, oh, okay, they can keep the mic. So then uh, me and Steve go inside and we sit down. There's, yeah, two people. And then at the end of the, during the movie, there's 10 people to 15 people showed up to watch this movie. And me and Steve were like, man, bro, what are we doing here? And we're like, yeah, let's just watch it. Steve Avalos did about 17 plus years. He went and got some popcorn and soda. He was like, and sat down. I said, damn, dog. All right. I said, you're going to stay in that sweater. I'm going to tell you this is not that much, the popcorn. And before that, me and Steve had a, Japanese food, and Jap Steve had never had Japanese food. And I said, Steve, you want some sushi? And he says, yeah, dog, I have sushi. I said, all right. So I said, this is what it looks like. Oh, no, dog, I can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> and then across the room, there was a lady. And this lady was sitting there having, din having dinner with his little, her little daughter. And she says, she looks at Steve, and they're looking at each other. And then she goes, you're from there? And he has a sweater that says, homeboys. He says, yeah. And I'm looking at Steve like, who are you talking to? Get over here. And I see the lady. I said, I used to work there a long time ago. I said, oh, yeah. And Steve goes, you're coming here for the movie? And she says, what movie? I go, what? I said, and we start telling her that we're having the movie for our 25th anniversary. And she goes, oh, wow. But I have my daughter and a babysitter. And I said, but it's Father G. It's PG. <laughs> she said, yeah, I'll be there. We watched the movie. Fast forward the story. The lady didn't go to the movie. But we watched the movie. And through the movie, the people stayed. And we did Q&A and all that stuff. And then at the end, there was a lady with a purple shirt that said, homeboys. And this lady was sitting there, and I said, I know you from somewhere. And she says, yeah, mijo, I know I... And she goes, oh, and she gives me a hug, you know. Like, you give G a hug. I didn't know this lady. Just give Steve a hug. <coughs> and she says, yeah, mijo, I called the theaters. And the theaters, Santa Monica, I called them all, and I called the casino, and I said, how many tickets sold? And they said, two. I said, okay, I'm on my way. This lady drove from uh, Carson, somewhere far out there. She was in Sino because they sold two tickets. I see this man goes out and speaks about you guys. This lady came all the way out there for us to Encino from Carson. That's what he does and that's what this place does. So give yourself credit. Because this place is here for you. Do you guys make it? Yes, have a great time. <laughs>